Aoife, do you remember that time when we went to Windsor to Nintendo's offices and played with Nintendo Labo? I do. It was a whole, what, four or five days ago? Yeah, pretty I much. I remember yeah. it well. But we weren't allowed to take anything away with us and we can only show so much footage that we captured of the Labo. So we thought we would sit down on the sofa and have a little chat about what it was like. Uh, what did you think of the cardboardy thing? I think that it was very cool. It's so clever the way it, some of it works and it, it works so much better than you think it's gonna. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when we were sitting down and playing like the fishing thing and like it just felt so impressive like how much give it had versus when it knew that there was some slack on the line. Yeah. And just the way it turned, like the movements matched perfectly up to the real life string. It was like, that was really cool. It was surprisingly intuitive, like this, yeah. this fishing game where you had this cardboard rod. And I, I think I caught someone staring at me at one point because I was just holding it up to my ear and slowly rotating it. Because inside there are little rubber bands yeah. that are there just to be pinged. So you get the feel of a reel being like clacker to clacker to clacker. That's clack, brilliant. Clack, 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 clack. Like that's so so cool. It's and great. It's the level of detail that you can always expect from Nintendo. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Let's see if we can catch this one. So is there only one Joy-Con in the game? No, there's two. Oh. So there's one for like this way waggly stuff. Yeah. And then that one is when you reel it. Wow. That's pretty smart. So I'm guessing it's using the camera in this one because the camera's pointing up that way. Oh, I see. Oh, right, because it is pretty much straight. Yeah. And there must be some gyroscopic stuff going on as well. And I, th I think the way, because so we got to build RC cars and we got to customize them. Uh, and I made a self portrait and you made a fancy thing with a bow tie. He was fancy. Um, we didn't have time to build other things, so we didn't get that side of it. But I, th I no. felt from putting together the RC car, you get a really good sense of how it works. And yes. then like there are bits in the game itself that show you how these things are made, which is really cool. So like, I think also one of the biggest things about uh, Labo that hasn't, I don't think, really come across in all the you know promotional stuff they've done with it so far is the building and the playing are to sort of relatively big parts of it, but the crafting of the cardboard is is just as big a part, but kind of the biggest element to it is the garage that yeah. was only really explained to us when we were there and that I don't feel like I'd really gotten a grasp of. No, so they, because they were talking about how, you know, Labo can help uh, get kids interested in coding and mm -hmm. making very like simplistic things. Mm -hmm. um, like you can almost kind of make simplistic games with it. it yeah, I never grasped what that was until we saw it, which mm -hmm. is kind of like this black screen with little nodules that you link to other ones, and they're kind of inputs and outputs. Very same. basic coding, if yeah. X then do Y. Yeah, basically. so if the the infrared camera on one of the Joy-Cons sees a, a white marker, then make it vibrate, which yeah. is why you can have uh, like a gun game, like, yeah. which I think they've showed before where there's like a man um, yeah, standing and up he, a couple of that falls over. Yeah. You can program that so you, like, you shoot it, then yeah. you go, Somebody made a doorbell, so like yes. they taped a Joy-Con to the door of the office and whenever uh, the door opened and it showed the marker, the yeah. switch would meow, um, which was annoying as shit, but like really, <laughs> really like, It's just impressive. clever, yeah, and you can see like how that would get kids imagined. Like that is the whole point of Labo. 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 It's like, it's not entire, it's not geared towards us. No. It's not geared towards, you know, people playing the mini games over and over again or you investing a lot of time in that section of, of it. Like it's all about, it's all about kids and getting their curiosity and imagi imagination up and getting them into thinking about ways that they can create with these kids, yeah. which I think it has to be 100% commended for. Yeah, definitely. I think it's it's brilliant. Like When we were making the RC cars, like building them and customizing them and playing with them took us, what, like half an hour? From yeah, and we were doing a, a very, very simple version yeah. of it, because there are actual other little cardboardy bits you can add to the RC car, and you can go well into like the you know pipe cleaners and the Fred stick and the little additions and the coloring. Like it is so cute, and like you said when we walked in there, it was like a, it was like daycare for adults because it was <laughs> yeah. just weird walking into a room where all these like grown ups were sitting down furiously coloring with felt tip markers. Like it is a hundred percent not for people right. like, yeah. you know, of the ages, whatever, 13 and up, it's not. But like, it is for little kids to be like, oh, this is cool, I can make, I can make games out of this. Yeah, it took me a while to get over myself, basically, and to actually yeah. get into using a, 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 a pen or like, to like, make something. Yeah. Um, but all the way through, I was just thinking like, if I were a young kid, 
mm. three hours out of, out of that easy yeah. from just, just playing with the RC car for the first time and then seeing what else you can do mm. with it and stuff. And yeah, that's, that's the kicker is that if you, like, I understood the reaction to Lama when they're like, ugh, it's made of cardboard, ugh, it's expensive. Mm. It's like, okay, but you're assuming it's for you. And if you yeah. find these games really simplistic, then it's okay, you're, you're kind of but missing the point because yeah. it's for kids. That said, I do want the piano. The piano is great. Really cool. You know what? And like people saying that, oh, it's expensive for cardboard. You're not paying for the cardboard. You're paying for the ingenuity that's gone into making right. these kits. And having seen them in action, it is 100% worth that because they are they are very clever. Yeah. Like the the way that they are constructed and the way they work and the way that you can then like the whole point is you you make them then you break them apart and use those composite parts to make something completely new. Yeah. And that's really amazing. It's like, lovely. That's really cool. The way that the, the thought that's gone into that is really impressive. Also in terms of the value of the experience, I think if you're a kid and you're playing with Labo, yeah. you're interacting it in a meaningful way from the get-go. Mm. Whereas I think an adult might be more inclined to see the building stage as just a prerequisite yes. to playing with it and having fun. Yeah. But like the piano takes ages to build. Like yeah. they said, all of the kits they were showing us, it was something like 20 hours build time. Yeah. You put 20 hours into, you know, an indie game, you're like, ah, how my money's worth. Yeah. That. That's and true. you know, so but if you we're talking about twenty hours with Labo before you even start playing with it, mm. and then however many hours a child can get out of it, because these are games for kids. Yeah, I think it it's like it's pretty much on the money. Like, I think it's decent. I, I just really want the piano, basically. Yeah. And you're thinking about like the I don't know. I feel like if I had kids and like they wanted to play with stuff, I I just feel like it's a really cute bonding experience that parents mm. and kids can have together. Like. Like even though the Labo is like the actual screen part of the game is very, um, you know, it, it breaks it all down as to all the building and what to do next and the steps to fold it and then put it together, blah, blah, blah. Like you can get so much enjoyment out of building that together with your kid, I think, mm. or the kid can get so much enjoyment, you know, coming to you for help with that. Like yeah. that's a really nice, it's a nice thing. And it's so nice to have something tactile mm. as well, you know, like it's not just playing a game, it's actually IRL making and folding and you know doing things. Yeah, and even when you are following the tutorial, it's not just looking at a video, like you have to press and hold mm -hmm. on each step to be like, I've done that bit now. Mm -hmm. It's Next. even the manual is tactile and you're really interacting with it yeah. in that way. And I found myself being very quickly sucked in. I could have I, I think I enjoyed the building. Yeah. Most actually, I was just like, this is. Good. I wanted to get yeah. my hands on the other kits and see how they come together. And yeah, well, it's the same as Lego, right? Like, I don't, you know, I think like a lot of uh, even adults like buy Lego, mm. and they're not buying it to play with it. They're buying to build it. Like that, I, that's the bit I enjoy. It's kind of like doing a jigsaw puzzle, right? Yeah. It's like you know, putting things together and sort of like following those steps and sort of. I don't know, having a nice thing at the end of it and taking your time with it, I quite like that. Yeah, it's, it's lovely. You get a real sense of pride for it. Like, yeah. the, the, the clearest analogy I have is like collecting Warhammer. Like, yeah. I've spent like well over 100 hours just painting and assembling. Yeah. And I've played maybe six times because in the entire year. It's the, it's the relaxing, you know, making. And, yeah, it's and lovely. That's the part of it that is, that is most enjoyable to a lot of people. Mm, I think they're called AFOLs, adult fans of Lego, by the way. Aww. There are a, a lot of them in the Eurogamer office. Like, you say Lego and you, you'll see yeah. a bunch of people like... Well, I can see people getting that way about Labo as well. It's just that, like, don't expect to have a really rich game ex gaming experience at the end of it, you know? The building part is... is Fun, but mm. it's it it's not meant to be anything more than that. You know, even if it doesn't sell that well, and you know, people don't really, I don't know. I feel like it's still enjoyable, and I still I'm still so glad that Nintendo have done it. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's a sign that like Nintendo wants to keep creating tactile, wholesome experiences. Mm that are outside of just, you know, staring at a screen. Yeah. I like that, I like that commitment to, yeah. to trying new things. The clearest analogy I have for it is the Game Boy camera and printer, mm. which I don't know if you had. I mm -hmm. had it growing up and all, like, it was a couple of really basic mini games with like your face, but you could also print things off and make stickers with mm. faces. And the functionality was like super, super simplistic, but it's one of the most treasured memories I have of playing with a Game Boy as a kid, because I got dozens of hours out of a printer yeah. and a shit webcam. That's amazing. And like think of how many lovely experiences kids will be able to look back on with making these cool things. That, yeah. that stuff would blow my mind as a kid. That you can like, that it, and I made an actual piano out of cardboard. Mm -hmm. Like, And I made it sing with cat voices. I don't know, I just think it's kind of cool. Yeah, I think it's great. So yeah, well done, Nintendo.
Hello, Johnny here doing some voiceover after the fact. We forgot to mention in this video that we also tried out the like stompy, buildy, smashy robot, which to be honest was a really impressive gameplay experience. I felt like an absolute idiot and I don't know whether I'd actually play that game for hours on end because it turns out picking up your legs and sort of stomping around a city while you pretend to punch it is actually quite tiring. But it was really impressive how how it felt and also the, the sense of feedback you got because um, the, there are weights in the back of the, the backpack so when you punch they kind of clack to the top of, of the backpack and, and the robot sort of punches out and you get a real sense of, of tactile feedback in the same way that you would from like vibrating controllers or whatever and given that this is all just coming from cardboard and string and rubber bands I think that's quite interesting but to be honest I mostly wanted to say all of this so I could show you how stupid I look. Enjoy that. <laughs> Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this little uh, look at Labo and us kind of tooling around with felt tip pens and pipe cleaners. We've got loads of other videos. Some of them are about cardboards, even. Also, let us know whose RC car you thought was better. <laughs> no! No!